Hi guys, in today's video we're looking at an airbrush kit that's available to purchase from the airbrush company that bears my name, Ort Painter Nerd. Now, to summarise it very quickly at the start of this video, it comprises of a compressor, an airbrush, some cleaning products for your airbrush and a cleaning pot to spray your residual painting. This airbrush set is absolutely perfect for the beginner airbrush user as it comprises of everything you need to get started in airbrushing. But also it represents a great saving overall on the total cost of the set. The set represents a saving of about 13% off the overall cost of individual products bought. Okay, so let's take a look at the set. So first of all, we're going to take a look at my very favorite airbrush, which is the Awata Eclipse CS airbrush. Here you can see some literature in the box and a spray pattern test for the Awata Eclipse. Here I'm showing you a little spanner that you use to take off the front of the airbrush. It also comes with some lubricant, which is fantastic to keep the trigger mechanism working silky smooth for months and years to come. Here you can see that I'm taking the Awata Eclipse CS airbrush out of the box and as you can see, it's a thing of beauty. It's my favourite personal airbrush and it's an absolute workhorse. It's very easy to dismantle this airbrush and look after it. So I recommended this in the airbrush set with um, airbrushes.com to actually say that this airbrush is perfect for the beginner airbrush user. Now we're looking at an airbrush spray pot. Now this pot is pretty much an essential purchase straight out of the gate if you're going to get into airbrushing. Because once you've finished spraying your object source, whether it be miniatures, canvases, t-shirts or anything in between, you need to spray that residual paint into something and an airbrush cleaning pot is just the perfect thing for the job. This set comes with three different cleaners. It comes with a liquid reamer that is fantastic for getting rid of any built up paint that may have been left in the airbrush cup and also for lacquer and enamel based paints. We then have a fast acting odorless environmentally safe cleaner which is brilliant to use for pretty much all acrylic paints on the market and then we also have a foaming airbrush cleaner that you spray in the airbrush cup that you can use after the very end of every painting session with all your acrylic paints. Here I'm showing you all the contents of the Awata Smart Jet Plus tubular compressor. Here you can see that I've taken the pressure gauge out of the bubble wrap and I'm just attaching it to the compressor which is so simple to do. You just literally tighten it finger tight onto the compressor like so. Now I'm attaching the hose to the pressure gauge and then we'll attach the other end of the hose to our Eclipse CS airbrush. After plugging in the compressor and turning it on, I'm going to adjust the pressure. 
So what we do, we lift up this cap and then we can turn it left or right depending on whether we want a higher pressure or a lower pressure and I depress the trigger on the airbrush and this allows me to get the pressure to the exact pressure that I want to be working at. I paint miniature scale models and I use airbrush ready paints most of the time. Here I'm using a Vallejo gunmetal grey colour and this is a metallic paint and this struggles to be painted out of most airbrushes but out of the Iwata Eclipse CS 0.35mm needle nozzle airbrush set it actually sprays fairly well. What you'll see me doing here is just making some lines and some circles and some dots, just testing it on some paper. If you're like me and you actually are going to actually start painting miniatures, I highly recommend that you do some tests on some paper before you actually paint your precious miniatures. What you'll find with the airbrush is if you pull back a tiny amount on the airbrush trigger whilst depressing it to release the air, you'll get much finer lines when you actually spray really close to your object source. Also what you'll find is if you pull further back on the trigger, more paint will be released. And if you actually are further away from your object source, the dots or lines that you're painting will become thicker and more pronounced. After every paint change, I flush the airbrush out with cleaner. First of all, I flush it out with water, and then if there's any residual paint left, it's a good idea to add a few drops of a water Medea cleaner to your airbrush and flush that out as well. After every time I finish painting a miniature and I'm putting my airbrush down for the day, I give it a thorough clean. Here I'm using the foaming cleaner just to make sure that any paint that could possibly be left in the nozzle of the airbrush is going to be taken away and keep the airbrush nice and smooth and clean. If you follow the first steps to cleaning your airbrush, you'll very rarely need to actually take it apart and clean it. But if you do need to take the airbrush apart, this is how you do it. First of all, I take off the chucking nut. I depress the trigger to make sure that there's no obstruction from me removing the needle from the back of the airbrush. Here, I'm actually going to start unscrewing the spring assembly. and out it pops like so and the trigger will just lift out like so here I'm using the spanner provided to take off the front of the airbrush as you can see Here I'm taking off the needle cap. And here, as you can see, the fit on the nozzle cap is quite tight. And I'll take a few seconds to unscrew it. Here I'm placing the airbrush parts back together and as you can see, it goes together nice and easily, just like taking it apart. As I place the airbrush back together, I want to thank the airbrush company for coming up with such a great airbrush set that actually bears my name. Not only are the tools in this set fantastic and work great, but they also, as I said at the start of the video, represent a great saving on buying them individually. I just want to mention here that I'm showing you that the trigger needs to be placed in the correct way. There's a little cutout underneath the trigger 
and the cutout needs to be facing towards the back of the trigger. Here I'm placing the spring assembly back into the airbrush and it's important that it's facing up and we slot it in like so and then we can screw it back in. So in this video we went over all of the products in this airbrush kit. We also dismantled the airbrush and we placed it back together again. But in the next video it's going to be focusing on how to paint a miniature for the absolute beginner airbrush user. Lastly guys I want to say a huge thank you for taking the time out of the day to watch this video. I hope you've learned something but as I say in the next video we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to learn how to paint a miniature scale model and I just want to lastly say a huge thank you to the airbrush company for putting this fantastic set together. Thank you again guys and I'll catch you in the next video.